Hi, everyone. Hi, guys. So lovely to see you again. Um, today, Dan and I just wanted to talk about a little subject which we've never really discussed very much. Um, and I think I've that's one that time especially. Divides people. It's the perfect tie, which gives us a clue. A little liberty which tie. We wanted to talk to you about colourful ties. <laughs> yes. And no, we're kidding. No, we wanted to talk to you about flour. Flour? Not, not flour. Flowers. Like bacon, yeah. Flowers. Flour. Florals. Not phrasing. Florals you know, yeah. Um, because, so we... I mean, they make up a huge amount of, of great perfumes of the world, don't they? We don't really think about it in terms of guys wearing perfume. Well, no. I mean, so we have been tagged um, by Making a Stink, uh, which is a kind of newish uh, channel. Uh, Camille and Chris, uh, the two uh, New York-based perfumistas, and um, they are really cool, and you should definitely, definitely uh, go and check them out. They've got, yeah. I was going to say they've got fantastic taste, but they've got very, very similar taste to us. <laughs> um, so so they, they love So the, they are the, great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they also wear Chris wears a suit and drinks wine. So, you know, so cheers to that. Um, um, but yeah, very similar taste to, uh, to ours. And I've been really loving watching. It's so good to see a, a channel with two people who've really, I mean, they've got something to say and they're, they're funny, intelligent and interesting, but they just, they love perfume as well. It's completely, um, it's just about the perfume. Anyway, so they tagged us for this. And um, I mean, flowers smell great. True blue. <laughs> and pink and red and white and, you know, everything. Um, but if you... We just wanted to kind of talk about, not just about men wearing flowers, but men wearing feminine fragrances. I mean, what is a, what is a feminine fragrance? The more expensive the fragrances get, you lose this distinction between female, male and unisex. It's only the cheaper the fragrance, the more likely it's going to be pigeonholed um yeah. you know smells are smells like petrol is not female or male freshly cut grass is not female or male flowers smell great yeah and i mean someone a very wise man i think it was chandler burr said that the distinction in perfume is basically just a way once upon a time of giving straight men permission to wear perfume and i think i think there's definitely some truth in that you know it it was a marketing strategy, wasn't it? To, to sort of try and even up the playing field. But actually, in terms of ingredients, if you like the smell and it suits you, wear it. Yeah. Whatever that, um, whatever that I mean, be. I've always found that to be true. You, you've got to... Guys, if you're not smelling the fragrances in the four women section, you are missing out on pretty much all of the greatest fragrances ever made. So, yeah. you know, so good. I mean, my, you know... We talk about loads about Mitsuku, my favorite. Um, you know, if I had to pick one, my favorite fragrance, she prepares all these fragrances, which you could be conceived of as, as um, feminine, maybe, but they're not, they just smell good. Anyway, let's talk about floral fragrances we like. So, we're gonna, we try to do a top 10, and I think we've narrowed it down to about 21. Um, yeah, so In classic good time on the fashion. Classic top 10. So we're going to work through a few flowers going from yeah. uh, the ones which are used most in masculine fragrances to, to maybe ones which aren't. So geranium. It's a great starting point, isn't it? Yeah. So I tell you what, here is one which is definitely for men. So don't be afraid because it says for men on it. Geranium yeah. pour monsieur um, yeah. by Frederick Mal. I remember Joe wear, wearing this loads and smelling it on him in the summer and thinking he smelled yeah. amazing. So this is, you know, geranium. I've almost dust. finished my bottle. It's, it's one in, in the summer you can just spray and spray and spray. This is, you know, geranium does have a slight, as well as this, this kind of bittery, greeny um, facet, has also this slightly minty facet. And so here, geranium pour monsieur, it's been kind of like ramped. I mean, you talk. You you you've worn and loved this more than me. I'll shut up from it. Well, it's just it's a great thing. It's it's Beautiful. it's bracing. It's icy cold. Mm. Um, it does. I mean, it does have a huge minty minty vibe. But it's done so well. And with this this white musk as well, um, it's fresh. It's clean. But it doesn't have a hint of of kind of citrus. It doesn't have a hint of of traditional kind of traditional perfume opening at all. It's it's like straight to the Arctic for me. And in hot weather, 
I, I love it. And it, it actually, I don't know whether it's this mentholated aspect, but it cools me down. It actually yeah. really cools me down. You, you spray that on and you, and you suddenly think, ah, oh, it's bliss. And I, I mean, people have sort of talked about sort of slight toothpastey notes. It's not, it's not really that. It's, it's much more, it's more complex. Those people who are wearing fucking good toothpaste. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd spray that right in my mouth. Wearing, using, whatever, you know. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's just the, the genius as well of, of, um, of Frederick Mal and, of, you know, uh, Dom is it Dominic Ropin? Dominic Ropin, yeah. Um, who's obviously done some other great things that we, that we could talk about. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just, it's perfumery, simple, straightforward, great ingredients. Great beautiful budget. flower, beautiful flower. Yeah, couple couple more uh, geranium. Here is one. You know, talking about hot weather, oh, this I is one this. which I, you know, as soon as it gets hot, I always reach for. It's Ealing Green by the wonderful Four One Sixty Tuesdays. So another yeah. big hint of geranium, which makes me think of spring. Here it's got that cut grass vibe. There's also there's some more flowers going on in there as well as some bright herbs. This is spring in a bottle it's invigorating oh, it's it takes that geranium the kind of it, uh, maybe it plays on the bitterness of geranium a little bit more than the kind of mintiness but but it, it, it is one of those fragrances every time i smell or wear i just feel happy i love it it brings a smile to my face i can't wait yeah. for the spring and the summer to come can't out. wait for spring to wear it uh another one i'm sticking with even though you might be surprised by this, we're sticking with geranium for, for a moment. This is, you know, a spectacular house. Patchouli Intense. So I know it says Patchouli Intense. Mm. Um, I don't know why it's called. I think this should be called Geranium Intense because this is like super lavender geranium and spice. Where there's a bit of patchouli in there, but it's this lavender and geranium. And it's this is um, incredibly powerful, potent stuff. I mean, it lasts for, for weeks. But you really feel that the, the geranium has um, the kind of herbaceous qualities of the geranium has been exaggerated by the lavender. Yeah, I've not seen so, for ages. And ages. It's great. Oh, it's just it really it's it smells like flowers. It smells as if you're yeah. out there with your head buried in it, getting kind of um, really stuck in. Patricia well, de Mecklenburg, genius. Yeah, she should be in charge of Gela. Oh, well, yeah, that's misogyny. All right, um, right. Next one, well, designer fragrance, amazing. Look, here we go. Another one I've had for quite quite a while, and I yeah, still, yeah, yeah, yeah. One more, one more geranium. I'm not obsessed with geranium. I just seem to have a, a few of them. So it's a really interesting take on, you know, the traditional like equipage, which is this kind of leathery fragrance that it's made like a fresh, sort of fresh version of equipage, but it's not because it's this floral herbaceous take on it um yeah very much in the sort of the modern the modern clean fougere style but with a mm. you know with a nod to the to the uh, original classic yeah sort of clean plenty it up, maybe. plenty of body and lovely soapiness to it as well um is that jean-claude eleanor that one yes i think yeah. uh i think it is i want to say yes Oh, it's correct era, myself it? if, if i'm wrong yeah and the next one, so the, the, there are Carnation, next flower, Carnation, is another, you know, in, in uh, masculine fragrances of the 70s and 80s, it, it, it was in everything, wasn't it? Again, mm. it's this, this quite um, slightly bitter um, uh, herbaceous flower, which maybe lends itself to masculine perfumery. I mean, this is not an out-and-out -out, uh, um, Carnation fragrance by any stretch of the imagination there's loads going on it's a kind of leathery citrus with kind of tonka but it's got this rose and carnation in the middle yeah. um there are it's lots that balance of... which makes it great actually the, between the florals and the the vanilla yeah. leathery base it's, without those florals that perfume would not be what it is absolutely uh, this is why it's such a great fragrance and why it stands out from so many of the others from the areas yeah. because you know, Jean-Paul Guerlain, like a master of, of florals, um, he's taking all that, that knowledge and experience and uh, he's putting it in, in a masculine package so that men get to wear and enjoy all those beautiful florals that otherwise might um, be the reserve. 
of women. It's funny right. like, whenever we go whenever we go somewhere that has a sort of huge floral smells, we don't we don't sort of recoil in horror, do we? I mean, if if you're in a nice garden somewhere or, or in a in a florist, I don't think we'd ever thought, oh god, this feels this feels awful. Yet with perfume, we so many years just shy away from these perfumes. It's it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. As if, as if they smell like the plague or something. Flowers smell great. Man. I mean, if you yeah. don't like flowers, you're an idiot. Right. Yeah. One of the best flowing, smelling flowers. I mean, I mean, there, there, there are lots, but a great, great um, flower from, from a great, great um, perfumer. Can't yeah. wait to smell her new release. Um, Tobacco Rose by That Fabian. is a masterpiece. There are loads and loads and loads and loads of great um, rose fragrances. I've just got um, two here to talk about, which are quite different, I think. Oh, this is just spectacular. Yeah. Um, even though so it's... So earthy. A, it's, it is earthy, and, but it, at the same time, it's plush and rich and luxurious. It's silk sheets and, you know, beautiful. You're just talking about that before we were videoing that, that scene from um, American Beauty. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, with um, Joe and I are going to film it later, but um, you know the one with Minas um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I get that here, but I get that earthiness and that bitter greenness, as well as ambergris and a kind of hay thing. No tobacco in it, of course. I don't know why she calls it tobacco rose, but beautiful. Oh, I love that fragrance. There are so this many good rose fragrances. Here is another one. Um, I know it's a bit frustrating to talk about these fragrances, which you can't buy. This is Malik Al Taif um, by Arisha Dore. Um This is Jesus Christ. This is amazing. So yeah. it, it's 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 Taif Rose again. It's got that like geranium. It has that kind of slightly citrusy um, um, uh, facet, which is I guess why it works when it's combined with oud. It works so well because you've got that kind mm. of like sheer bright um, searing quality. Um, and that's forty percent concentration. Yeah, and also all the that's serious deer stuff. musk as well. But this is a, a spectacular, sexy, rich, beautiful rose. Yeah. Right, absolutely. So th those are all flowers, which you know, uh, geranium, carnation, rose. They're the ones which we kind of feel safely in male territory. So we're going to go to another flower, which I think when I was getting into perfume, I thought this was one of the most old lady notes um there was tuberose yeah but there's um, some absolute gems aren't there absolutely oh, nice so do you want to do you want to kick us off with a well i've i've got a little a little interesting take on tuberose and i don't know if this actually contains tuberose but i get a tuberose vibe here and that is da -da, i don't know if that's focusing or yeah. not tank battle from by lush, lush from gorilla perfume I mean, it's just bizarre because it is this damp soil, beetroot, labdanum thing. But I think it's done with tuberose in the same way that bubblegum chic or fracas might be yeah. done. That, that give that effect. Um, I may I be wrong about that, but I'm going to put put it out there as a tuberose. I think it, for me, it's it's a really really modern wacky nod to fracas. That that kind of like you know leathery. Um, tuberose i think it's 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 such an interesting um such an interesting fragrance and such a, an interesting yeah. way of taking a material and taking it in a wacky kind of direction yeah I mean, if you could like if you could sort of imagine like a really damp soily beetroot flower um but <laughs> and, and then this sort of mossy metallic thing as well it's i mean it's completely nuts it's completely bonkers and it's kind of depressing in a wonderful way. It's a really melancholic sort of smell. It's like yeah. it's like rain, and it's like you know, it's like sort of trudging along. I mean, the, the story is inspired by this guy that slept in a, yeah, in a big yeah. steel tank, and you know, it, it was a it was a big sort of deal. He got moved out because Banksy came and and defaced his property without realizing he was in there. It's a, it's, it's a funny a funny story, not funny in the traditional sense. Yeah, um, but yeah, as Amazingly Tube Rose goes, that's, that's, that's a great way of doing it. Yeah. Um, so another surprising tuberose fragrance that you would be forgiven for not realizing is a tuberose fragrance, um, especially from the name. It is, if you can see that, if I get your reflection, it is, uh, Sir, can you see it? Yeah. 
yeah, just about. It's really difficult to get these um, shiny uh, bottles. This is Sir Winston um, by Bortnikov. So you see the title Sir Winston, you think it's going to be tobacco and leather and booze. It's not. I mean, there is some tobacco, but it's almost tobacco blonde. But this, for me, this is a tuberose and ambergris <laughs> fragrance. A really absolutely incredibly exotic fragrance i feel it, i feel i'm transported to jungles and i'm surrounded by these these uh, flowers and i get a great feeling of humidity mm. when i wear this this kind of dense as if i'm in a jungle being surrounded by these uh, indolic um great big white flowers um i need I to mean, smell that again you know because i can't remember it it's it's quite and also I mean just generally I mean Dmitry Botnikov is somebody who uses you know whilst he was a distiller of oud he uses beautiful white florals you get frangipani and ylang ylang in the middle of lots of his uh, fragrances creating this creamy like velvety beautiful beautiful bed um anyway you've got another tube rose for us haven't you yeah no, I mean, sorry I should have unwrapped these earlier. But this is the mighty beast, carnal flower. I don't know. Is that is that coming across? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, by again, um, Dominic Ropion, genius, Master. absolute genius. Um, and this, oh, I mean, that's so good. A, a, another perfume that somehow it it just feels like all top and all middle, but it just goes on and on. You've got. You've got Ylang Ylang, you've got Jasmine. Tuberose is the big player in this. You know, it's the nod, nod to Fracar. Um, it's also... Co coconut and white musk. Yeah. When you, when you wear this, and actually I've noticed when Martha, your, your other half, wears this, mm. it's one of those fragrances which, you know, it's quite present, but it automatically smells expensive. I mean... The good, these good flowers, they are, you know, expensive. Tuberose is an experience, ex, expensive material. You know, some of the other yeah. flowers we're going to go on to a little bit. They are the most, apart from maybe oud, they are the most expensive things because they're sought after and they smell precious. And when I smell that on you or Martha, it just, it feels, it smells regal and rich. And yeah. It's amazing. so unapologetic, it, you know, it's it's really bold and big and larger than life. And it, you know, it immediately has personality again. When, when you smell it, it, it feels like, um, it feels like it fills a room in a very deliberate way. Yeah. Which I love. And portrait of a lady is another one that, you know, that we could, we could have talked about in terms of Rose, but you know, they are larger than life and they make no apology. And I think on a guy, Channel Flower is, is a real masterpiece. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, it, it's sort of, it's, it sort of reeks of springtime. Reeks of springtime. Yeah, amazing. Give it a whirl. Um, this is this is a sort of um, yeah. We're going to put this under the ca uh, category of, of tuberos, but there's so much else. This is one of my absolute favourite uh, fragrances by one of my favourite uh, um, perfumers. But you can't see because yeah, it, it won't focus. Stuff. It is da, 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 Mora. Um, there's so much going on here. This is kind of like a modern, yeah. complex sheep bro. This is, this is so it. good. <laughs> I mean, there's so much uh, like pepper and ash and smoke. And uh, there's loads of kind of floors as well as tuberose, there's champaka and other things. Isn't there and, cannonball flower in there? Whatever yeah, cannonball that is. flower, yeah. I don't even know what that is. I need to look at yeah. that. Um, opium, civet, coffee. Gardenia, it's just so busy and so rich. And again, this is one which just takes you to another world. This, yeah, oh, this really is, you know, this is one of my top five fragrances. This, yeah, me too. It's I just, remember the first time we ever smelt those in the loft, and like Im immediately I, I knew I was buying a bottle of that. And the, the first thing we did in Rude Air White when we went was you got Turkish leather, I picked yeah. up that, yeah. And I'm glad we did because they're gone. I mean, they've been reintroduced in a slightly, slightly different setting, but they're not they're not identical. I yeah, smell it's them more, and more. Back to the, yeah. Those originals are different. Unfortunately, okay. Another another. So here's a flower which does crop up actually in um, male fragrances. This is iris, and so 
the obvious, the most obvious example being Durham. We're not going to talk about Durham here. Um, I've got a bottle about, out there, which I have to say I forgot about, but I do love. Yeah, I mean, it's great. 2005 yeah. masterpiece. And to have a, a, a great big commercial success from a, a male floral fragrance is amazing. This is one of um, the first Iris fragrances I think I bought because it's, 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 it's a perfumer whose work I, I fell in love with. This is Zonka. So this is a kind of sister oh. to Timbuktu. So it's got that um, kind of incense vetiver thing. But the iris in this just gave, gives this amazing, chalky, meditative, thoughtful, moody um, quality. Um, it's a similar kind of fragrance to that, East, what's that East of Venetius one? Iris Nazareth, is it? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah. Not exactly yeah. the same, not exactly the same, but this is, yeah, if somehow moody. It's really great, isn't it? It's almost kind of spiritual. A um, couple more Irish fragrances. Another one, which I kind of, another perfumer who I, who I got into kind of quite early on. Um, it's this Queer Diris by Pierre Guillaume. Um, Iris works so, oh, what's that to my face? Uh, so well, um, when it's a bit dirty, I think. And this mm. is a great example of a, of a dirty Iris. This is a big, dark, leather clad Iris. You kind of get smoky horse saddle. Oh, it's. There's a lovely cherry drop thing with that as well, I seem to remember. Mm. There's, I yeah, always there's a sort of cherry drop. There's a there's a deep cordially um, kind of rich kind of sweetness. It's as a yeah. It's a, I forget how good this is. It's funny you know when you mm. you encounter things early on in your journey and then you put them to the side and I feel like I've neglected that a little bit. Um, but I'm just going to mention we've I've I've mentioned this next fragrance a lot in my videos. Uh, it's my favorite Iris fragrance. One of my favorite fragrances. It is. I mean, it's just a little tar bottle, but she's Irisoir by Sultan Pasha. So I think there is an extent to which that this is an homage to Iris Gris uh, by Jacques Fat, which we smelt um, in the Osmotech. Amazing fragrance. But this is spectacularly uh, rich. It's just rich. It's rich. Nice. It's rich. It's, it's rich. Really it's so thick and, and regal, and it, it is just like the, the thickest silk sheets engulfing you with richness and opulence, and it makes you feel like you're wearing a massive crown. Um, <laughs> I remember finding it quite meaty as well when I smelt it. Oh, it feels like you could if bite there was a such whole a thing as chunk meat. out of it. Yeah, yeah. It's, so, it's so substantial, even though it's a pretty little flower. I don't know what he's done... Um, yeah, I mean, Oris, Oris butter is an incredibly expensive material. Um, yeah. And, you yeah, know, the way he's created this, oh, this is a little, a little drop of heaven. Okay, so we carry oh, on. It. Love it. We, we, we're going to carry on with some blue flowers again, aren't we? So we're getting more into the kind of floral floral now, aren't we, that, that people might associate with yeah. their bunch of flowers in a florist smells. So, I mean, we could have mentioned loads of fragrances from this house. So we, we're trying to keep it to one. And I do think if I could just have one, I always prefer this to Apre, uh, to Le It's yeah, just, it's great, all it? those, like Heliotrope and, um, and Iris and Violet, just all these achingly beautiful, beautiful blue florals, melancholic. There's a slight kind of almondy quality to it as well, but it's yeah. amazingly you know, this is like super, super, super niche quality. This is not a um, particularly old bottle. It's interesting to see that uh, all of these, a lot of these old Gelan fragrances have just been released in new bottles for 2021. So if anyone's tried the new Apro Londe, yeah, let us know. It's so let... weird. Because, I mean, that's such an iconic design as well. It's Yeah. I wonder if and it's And it's not difficult... like they're discontinuing the B design. I mean, they're still making uh, but, it. But are they? Or, I mean... Because the thing is, I wonder if it's an expensive bottle to produce because of the... I wonder if the new one's a cheaper bottle or... Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. Who can tell? Right. You've got another spectacular 
oh, blue yeah. floral fragrance. So, and it comes in a blue box, which is ideal. This is Hasuna Hana by Grace Smith. I've talked about this before. Um, and it's just, I can't get it out because it's so snug in there. But it comes in this beautiful little blue velvet coffin. And there she is. Um, and actually, this is getting richer and richer in the bottle as well. It's it's just sort of, it's settling. Um, oh. So it's, I, I mean, get a bottle of that. In, terms of, in terms of the florals in here, it's iris, ylang ylang, you've got rose, you've got jasmine, uh, lotus, lotus flower. I mean, it's it's really beautiful. It's kind of, I can't put my finger on it. It's, it's I mean, it's the first real modern perfume, 1888, a year before Jiki. And it's it's just a great sheep for a floral. Um, and it's, I mean, it smells to me surprisingly, surprisingly unisex. I mean, it, for, yeah. you know, for something with, with those florals, you think it might be a very, a very dainty sort of feminine affair. And it's not at all. It, you know, it's full blooded. It's rich. Yeah, I remember it, it being know, like it's got real heavy depth. and yeah, yeah. Again, you could chew it. You know, it's it's that dense. And you've got patchouli. You've got sandalwood and cedar in the base, and this beautiful oak moss that's actually in the middle of the fragrance, not even in the base. It's right there in, at the heart of it. Oh, and I mean, you know, an old an old house. This has been this has been remade since. You know, of course, this is not the original juice, and I don't know what that smelled like, but. You know, I'm I'm damn pleased that someone has taken the time to to sort of recreate this one. I have to say, and they have Shemal Nesim, they have Full Nana, they have a, a, a lovely rose, um, a rose oud thing that they that they have a lot and lots of more modern things as well, sort of more recent mm. releases like Sylvan Song. They're a great house, I think. Absolutely underrated. But for me, that that fragrance does stand out, and it's one I remember. We smelt the X-ray as well, and when we smelt the X-ray, I found the the yeah. X-ray a little bit closed, a little bit blunt. You know, yeah. I guess we only tried it in the shop, but I found the AD, EDP. You just got the whole thing just just opens up and envelops you, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it it's a sort of again, it's a, a room filling thing, but still subtle as well with it. You know, the blend and mm. the you know the way the way that one note melds into another is really nicely done it's not loud in the sense of being vulgar or brash but it just fills a room with this kind of confident glow amazing which i love i absolutely love it so this is a good segue to art we're now getting into our like multi-floral <laughs> yeah. i guess we could have had more i could have been in our multi-florals couldn't it but like we're getting oh, into yeah. we're getting into some big yeah you know, big floral beasts what have you got for us um, well, the next one, another Prin perfume, actually. Um, and this is Mandarava, which is his tribute to his grandmother. And I mean, my God in heaven above. that I mean, that's I mean, what this is about, actually. <laughs> it's, uh, I really need to, oh. I've got a little, I've got a sample of that. But I'm... <sighs> it's so good. I mean, I mean, everything under the sun, Ylang Ylang, Champaka, um Big, I mean, big rose and 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 civet as well. More, more and more that I'm yeah. getting civet. Um, jasmine. I mean, I'm just smelling off the cap here, but I mean, everything, everything under the sun, really. But it is, it's all marigolds. It, it's a smells like all of the most expensive, luxurious florals, bound up with some incense and civets, and yeah. <sighs> it's, I mean, it's it's like hypnotic. It's it smells. It, I've never taken any sort of drugs in my life, really. But this, if there was a if there was a drug in a perfume, it would be this. The smell yeah. is so narcotic. It's so hypnotic. Yeah. Um, it it takes you away from wherever you are on on planet Earth. It's so beautiful. I can yeah. see what he was going for, and it, it works. Now this is still available, but it's in a different format now. So yeah. this this is fifty ml. I think you can buy it now in thirty ml. Yeah, and unfortunately, the 30 ml is like the same price as the 50 ml was, isn't, yeah, I think, isn't it? Yeah, um, and I mean, look at that juice. It's, it's just dark and brown and rich and dirty. It's such a print color, isn't it? Yeah, oh, totally. Totally. <laughs> yeah. you, you know that this thing is going to have an opinion, whether you like it or not. Yeah. Which I love. Even, I mean, um, I can even smell it out of, out of the cap. I need those two fragrances. You got to get it. Yeah, I need to get them. Right, you've got, and you've got one yeah. more theatrical floral haven't you for us i've got another kind of kaleidoscopic thing yeah which is 
is this little guy, Mai, from Bogue, Bogue, Antonio Algardoni. So, and I'm just going to show you what a really cool thing, which we might talk about at another point in time. But I'm the lucky owner of bottle number 1000. Uh, yeah. Which is very cool. So I think I think there is something on its way at some point that as a sort of well done for getting the thousandth bottle. He thought that it had gone missing because I never noticed that for ages. There she is. Um so my I mean my is a really filthy, filthy sheep. <sighs> it's I mean it's it's so dirty. If I think this is a modern day Shalomar in a sense. I mean, it just, it's everything under the kitchen, everything but the kitchen sink, really. Um, and it's its this huge, big, soapy, aldehydic blast, but then with these huge animalic florals behind. Um, and that's thats what I love so much, is it's just the contrast. And it, it feels like it's a perfume out of another era. Big incense, a lot of labdanum as well. But really, it's this force, the rose, the jasmine are there. Tuberose again. I mean, I don't, there's probably more in there than I than I can ever identify. Oh, I, I won't spray it, but it will fill it will fill my bedroom. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's 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 so bold, and you have to, you have to be quite courageous wearing this because it's. I mean, it's an impolite, slightly pissy beast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, it. You know, it really for me, it really works, and I love it. Amazing. Can, can I just mention be. another impolite, slightly pissy beast? Yeah. Which is we haven't talked about this house uh, for th for that long, uh, but this is this is Amouage Gold, and you can oh, see how much yeah. is left. It's it was one I really got into on, on my way into um, to, to Amouage, and um, I've never smelt the first Amouage. You know the Amouage Crystal, which comes in that that, that, that square box, and I I think um, this is a kind of a, maybe a slightly tamer version of that, but this is still pretty beastly and uh, pissy as well. This is quite kind of civety. It's kind of um, rose hippie and lily and it's yeah. big and it's powdery and there's a massive nod to the, to the past and big um, theatrical old fragrances. But somehow the incense in it drags you into this um, amouage world. Do you know, I remember wearing that perfume from a sample that you gave me at a concert in St. Martin in the Fields. And when I left in the interval and came back to my seat, the whole area still smelled of that. I mean, it's <laughs> enormous. Yeah. Is, is it Christopher Sheldrake? Am I making that up? I don't or know. Maybe. Or is it Lud Christoph Ludemel or someone random like that? I don't know. I'll have to... I don't know if it will say on a fragrance car. Guy Robert? Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, he knows what he's doing, clearly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, he's, he's, done, <laughs> he's done some pretty serious fragrances, hasn't he? <laughs> um, amazing. Oh, spectacular fragrance. It's incredible, okay. isn't it? I love that powderiness, though. I really love that powderiness. Yeah. I think I described, once described it as the talcum powder of Christ. Yeah. Well, if, yeah, he would. I mean, if... If he if he needed a little a little dab, if that he was would going be for a long run and it was getting a bit sweaty and you just need a little bit of something, oh, yeah, in a heartbeat. Yeah, I can't see you. You've disappeared off my screen, which is really weird. Oh, that's sad. There you are. That's better. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um. Right. Two more. You. One more from you. One more from me. Well, what have I got? Um. Oh, so I've got the. Yeah, the Molinar, which is, it's just a little nod, really, to um. To the first, this is it. It's a cheap nod to the first Shebra, really, of um, oh, Coty. Coty, yeah. And it is a sort of, it was like a ver not a version of that, but they re released it. Oh, it's gorgeous. They re released this in 1980 something. Not this, the, Co the Coty Shebra. And apparently, this is something of an idea of what that was. So it's Osmanthus, Iris, Jasmine, Rose. Um, all kind of tucked away there in the middle, and it's but it's really a sort of fruity sheeper with this, the bergamot and the oak moss and, and the amber doing their thing. But I love the florals in this because they're so 
they're so seamless and they're so they're kind of they're so unisex it, it doesn't lean in any particular direction they're just beautiful smells beautifully blended it kind of reminds me a little bit of a fragrance i used to wear a lot um which was Chiruti 1881 i wore that yeah. a lot when i came when i came to durham and it, it just it takes me back actually i i love it and this is now discontinued again oh really um, i didn't know that yeah which is a real shame but you can you can i mean you can probably still get these on ebay I, mm. I think this was about 20 quid and I got it off. Amazing. I think I got it off someone on one of the Facebook groups at some point. Yeah, but yeah, check it out. It's really good stuff. And it, you know, if you want Koti Shibra, you're not going to get it. Yeah. So, well, unless you, know, you want to spend <laughs> thousands of pounds for something yeah. like dubious, you know, like a bottle of Petrus from 47. Um, <sighs> yeah. Give it a try. Just one You've more fragrance. You've got a real gem here, haven't you? Another fragrance for me. Again, this is just going back to what we said at the beginning. If you're looking at fragrances which say they're for women and you're not trying them because you're a man and you need to, like, you know, get into fights and get drunk. I mean... And have kebab. This. So this is actually quite a recent purchase. So this is the Eau de Cologne concentration. So this was discontinued in 1990. I don't actually know how old this bottle is. It's a bit difficult to date. Um, it's the most famous women's fragrance it's the most famous fragrance um ever this and there's is, a reason this is iconic for that because it smells absolutely amazing and i especially in this concentration in, in this uh, this eau de cologne version um it's oh my god it's amazing yes it's white florals and aldehydes in complete over the top theatrical flamboyant um degrees but in this eau de cologne, I also get this really, really amazing amber hug. And there's also a lot of civet. So I get this, after this big, almost screechy in your face, loud blast at the beginning, I just get absolutely cuddled in this sensual, beautiful, comforting blurredness. Oh, I've got to try that. <laughs> that's I've, I've not even smelled chanel number no. five for years and years and years the, that's the that, thing even no, i no. or basically because i you know I, I i've been on a bit of a kind of vintage girl and, and buying um uh, I don't know, obsession maybe you, you call it recently and then i and i noticed that this year is the 100 year anniversary anniversary of le monstre this fragrance the most successful fragrance ever that you know that sold outsold yeah. everything and will outsell every other perthy ever made um, and i didn't have it so i thought i needed to get it and i looked at, um, a bit into which concentration sounded the most appealing so i saw this eau de cologne one which was discontinued in 1990 but because it's the greatest selling fragrance ever, ever there are millions of them around i think i paid 45 pounds and that was unopened 118 mil and is it's that an eBay? yeah but if you if you go That's on eBay, really there are there are heaps of them. You shouldn't have to pay more than you know sixty seventy pounds for for an unopened bottle because there are so many of them made. You, you shouldn't it shouldn't of the eau de cologne. You mean? Yeah. Well, of of, of all you know formulations. Anyway, um, well, I feel like we've had quite an emotional journey here. Yeah, we we've, we've really kind of we've given each other a little bunch of flowers in a metaphorical way. <laughs> yeah, and then. And then sort of high fived and had a fight and <sighs> punched a cow. <laughs> whatever, yeah. we, whatever we do when we've had too many. Um, I've never punched but, a cow, by the way. I have I have startled a cow, but I've not punched one. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean it's a it's a great journey to go on, isn't it? And to kind of keep expanding our our noses and keep expanding our yeah our sort of what we what we think we should try. I still have to say. I think we need to explore the modern day designer women's. shells for for women's things and, and see what's going yeah. on. Like I keep hearing people talking about Sarah Jessica Parker, this and you know yeah. that you know that's really good. Or like Gucci Envy, the the women's one. I've not tried that. Or Rush. Apparently that's incredible. You know we yeah, we just yeah, we yeah. don't. And maybe these will be classics in years to come. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I think I think we've really delved into the greats, though, with something like Chanel. I mean, num your number five is is the benchmark, isn't it? There, there's some good juice in there. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, 
yeah, I mean, the floral is such a big, it's such a big category. There are so many, you know, I, I can't, I don't know how many we've talked about. We've probably talked about quite a lot, but there are so many more. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds oh, more. God, yeah. And if you look at uh, fragrances with a flower in the name and you think, oh, I don't like fra- that because I like Aventus, maybe just, you know, stretch, stretch. Just see if you can be a bit braver. I mean, if you've watched this video this far, you're probably converted anyway. So we're, you know, we're probably talk, yeah. you know, preaching to the to the choir. But but even in but, things which are really marketed as masculine, you think are more your thing, they have got florals in them. I bet you know. I bet if you even take your sort of Creed, original Santal, or your Aventus, or whatever it might be, I bet you'll find there's a little bit of rose in there. There's a little bit of a little bit oh, of yeah. Osmanthus. You know, they, they are in common usage lavender geranium they're all in there yeah i mean they're not hidden so much these days which is good so much to love oh anyway i'm gonna give, just give you one tiny thing because actually it's worth it's worth saying can you see what's written there on the inside of that yes yeah i think that's quite a nice message actually yeah i'd forgotten about that but um it's true earth laughs and flowers True Until good. next time. Bye. Happy sniffing. <laughs>